Hi booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be all the books that I read in the month of March. This might be a slightly longer video than normal because I read quite a bit in March, quite a bit more than is normal for me. Um, so you might want to settle in with a beverage of choice. I certainly have one very large mug of coffee here, uh, which I will be sipping throughout. And yeah, let's talk about everything that I managed to get through. So for all the stats lovers out there, I'm going to go through some stats very quickly for you, first of all. So the number of books that I finished in the month was 16. I read 4,892 pages and I didn't listen to any audio books at all. How the books were made up was that I had two physical books and 14 through my e-reader. Genres, I had 14 romance, one crime, which is also a little bit romance, and one that I have classified as other in my journal, uh, but I think is actually historical literary fiction. In terms of rating, uh, my average for the month was 3.31. I had four books in the two star range, nine books in the three star range, and three books in the four star range. I say ranges because I make use of quarter and half and three quarter stars uh, because I use Storygraph uh, for my online recording. Nine of the authors that I read were new to me and four of them I had read before. Um, I, that doesn't add up to 16, that's because I read multiple books by the same author. Where I got these books from is five were already on my shelves at the start of 2024. Two of them came from my library and nine of them I borrowed through Kindle Unlimited. However, one of those also goes back to being on my TBR at the beginning of the year, uh, but it has been returned to Kindle Unlimited, so I no longer own it. But it is another one that came off of last year's TBR. And finally, how long were some of those books on my TBR? The oldest book on my TBR was an ebook, and that was downloaded in July 2017. The shortest time a book was on my TBR was literally minutes because I did have some borrows from Kindle Unlimited this month, as I've already said, and I was pretty much downloading and reading those um, at the same time. But in terms of the books that I owned before 2020, Far, four at the start of the year, so from my 2023 TBR, um, the shortest time that the um, one had been on there, it was downloaded in January 2023. So with all of those stats, I've earned myself some book money again this month because I've read books off of my um, owned TBR or TBR from previous to 2024, and I've also had a couple of library borrows. If you've seen an earlier video, you know that I give myself a pound for every book that was already on my TBR, and I give myself 50p for every book that I borrow from the library. Um, the 50p from the library, I am not applying to Kindle Unlimited. Um, partly because the Kindle Unlimited is something that I'm doing on a whim, um, it's, and I'm doing it because I'm trying to read um, a specific set of authors in a certain amount of time. Uh, so they aren't books that I'm really needing to read, um, but they are helping me to get through with another project. Um, but the library books, the library books are intentional reads, um, so I am counting those. I've earned myself £7, so £6 for books that are on my TBR at the start of the year, and a pound um, for the two library books. So I've got myself a nice little truck of money there that I can put onto a gift token. I'm thinking of using uh, national gift tokens. Um, because I can use them anywhere, so I can use them in national stores or I can use them in a lot of independent bookshops as well. So, nice lot of money allocated to me. So let's talk about all the books that I read. I'm not sure that I'm going to go into them in too much depth because, like I say, there were 16. Um, this video is already at six minutes, so I'm, I'm going to try and whiz through them quite quickly. I'll try and give you the main protagonist names and really whether I enjoyed it or not, and I'm probably going to leave it at that. If you want to know synopsis, then obviously please go and check them out um, through whatever medium you tend to use. 
The first book that I finished was Beholden by Corinne Michaels. This was book two in the Salvation series and it carries on Catherine and Jackson's story from book one. Um, I gave this book three and 3.75 stars. I did enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it as much as the first one. I felt it was a little dragged out in places and that the miscommunication trope was overused a little bit. Um, but it was a good finish to their story arc um, and obviously setting up uh, for some of the following books. I have already read book three and four. It's a series that I started out of order and I have no idea how that happened. Um, but yes, uh, I've been sleeping on Corinne Michaels when I shouldn't have and I'm looking forward to picking up more from her in future months. The second book that I finished was Origin in Death by J.D. Robb. This is book 21 in the In Death series and this one kind of packed a bit more of a punch. Um, I have been told by someone who has read the entire series that this book carries a story that will be kind of an overarching plot line for the rest of the series and I can certainly see that. It was another one of her books where I had no clue who the murderer was. She didn't give you any ideas right until the very end. And yes, um, there again, it, it, it's also um, a book that brought up a lot of moral questions um, because there is uh, some suggestion of um, using people's DNA in a way that they haven't given approval of, um, but also that would have long-term impacts on others and the question of whether that should be allowed to continue they should be allowed to continue um when in effect they're human beings too so there are some moral questions in this one as well and i think that is what is um carried on through the rest of the series um so i'm looking forward to picking up book 22 when i eventually get to it the third book in the month that I finished is Tell Me to Stop by Charlotte Bird. This is the first book in her Tell Me series and this was one that I didn't really enjoy and this is going to be a series DNF. I'm not going to continue after this. There was something a little lacking in the writing. I don't know whether it was an early, early book for this author. Um, sorry for the unintended uh, pun there. I apologise. Um, but yes, it's just, it's not for me, this one. I just, I don't really remember anything about it. I just remember that I didn't quite enjoy it. it. I think it's one that needed some heavy editing. I think it needed the plot bringing forward a bit more. The, the plot, um, the idea for the plot, I feel, was stronger than the idea for the romance. And I definitely wouldn't explore more. And to be honest, it hasn't left me... The strength of the plot, unfortunately, hasn't left me intrigued enough to continue the series any further forward. So, yep, series DNF. I then started a project. Um, I have said before, um, and I think I said it in my April TBR, I'm going to Four Brits Book Fest in uh, York in July. And I haven't read from very many of the authors that are now attending. I set myself a little project to just read books by attending authors and I've set myself up with a spinner wheel and I've got all the authors that are attending on there. I've had to remove a couple since and one of them I'm really quite disappointed um, because she's become a very big author uh, and I was really looking forward to meeting her and getting to her books um, because I see her quite often across social media. Um, and yeah, I dedicated an entire week to it. So the first of those books and the fourth book that I finished in the month was Broken Play by Alison Rhymes. This uh, is June and Drew's story. I can't remember if it's a series. I think there are other books. And I really loved this book. Now, this book, full warning, this book does involve cheating and that isn't normally um, a plot line that I can get on board with. Um, I don't think it's a plot line that many people can get on board with um, because however cheating is justified in the real world, it's, it's not a good thing. So, but it is actually the jumping off point for the story. Uh, June actually catches Drew cheating with someone else 
um, and she decides that she is going to leave um, the marriage and she's going to carve out her own life um, and it's a second chance story because then uh, Drew realises exactly what he's done and I said I wouldn't go into the synopsis of the stories but I think I have to with this one um, and it's about how he proves that um, he was being foolish and that um, there should have been more communication between them um, because it wouldn't have happened if certain needs hadn't been communicated. And I actually really enjoyed how um, Alison really portrayed that. Um, it wasn't, it, it wasn't, an, you know, a, a one sorry fixes everything. He had to work for his redemption. He had to work to um, start to make June feel like she he she could bring him back into her life into her circle again and I appreciated that and actually um at the end of the book uh the epilogue at the end of the book is a few years in the future and it is from Drew's point of view and Drew's point of view points out that he has hurt June immeasurably um and irreparably and that he has to be mindful every day of that and he has to continue working and she has to continue working as well uh, for them to stay a couple and stay invested in each other. And I I really liked that. And um, I actually would really like to read more from Alison um, before I get to the uh, book signing. Because um, I'd like to go and say that I read more than one book by her. The second book of the project and the fifth book of the month is Filthy Firefighter by Emma Louise. Um... And again, this was a hit for me. Uh, the main characters are called Adele and Hayden. It was only a short story. It was more of a novella. Um, and I just, it was a bit of a one where um, they were on a, they weren't, it wasn't enemies to lovers, but there was a bit of push and pull between the two of them to bring them together and to work together. And again, I really enjoyed it. Uh, there was um, a fairly solid background plot. The main plot was the romance, um, but it worked honestly really very well and I really enjoyed it. And again, Emma Louise is another author that I would like to read more from before I get to the uh, book signing. The third book in the project and the sixth finish of the month was The Honey Trap by Carly Perrin. And this was actually the best book of the project. Um, Carly is definitely an author I'm going to come back to. Um, and she is one that I'm going to be quite early in the queue to get something signed by her. Um, because I absolutely love this book. I gave it four stars. Um, and I was really surprised because, again, it was another one that had an element of cheating in it. But again, it was so well done. It was done in such the right way that you could get in board, get on board with the rest of the story. Um, because the cheating, the cheating is, is a bit of a, tr a trigger point for the story. Um, but it's also... Um, it's also a part of a wider story. Um, you have to read it to understand. Um, the, it's not something that either party wants, um, but there are other circumstances. So the circumstances still don't make it okay, um, but there's information that's being held back from you as the reader that you don't get until towards the end. You have your suspicions, um, but until it all comes out, uh, then everything kind of comes together and you understand everything that's been going on. So again, it is one that I would definitely recommend. And again, Carly Perrin, an author that I definitely want to read more from in the future. The fourth book of the project and the seventh finish of the month is Craving Love by Kat T. Mason. This one was a bit of a letdown, only 2.75 stars from me. Um, the main characters are called Alexa and Hunter. There was cheating in this one, which was not done well at all. Um, I really, really did not enjoy this one. Anytime anyone got into a disagreement, they um, were bellowing at each other. And that description was used 
every single time. There was no need for them to be bellowing at each other. It could have just been a heated exchange. Um, there are other words and descriptors that could have been used. Um, I think the author just got hung up on that one word and I just got fed up. And I just, when I got to the end of it, I would just like, I just wanted to throw my Kindle in frustration because it just, it, it was not a great story. Um, lots of things that didn't quite come together, lots of promise in the story that didn't quite happen, things that you don't understand, things were in the synopsis that I didn't understand um, because they weren't touched on or fleshed out in any way when they, I feel like, I feel like it's a very missed opportunity this book, it's another one that could have done with a lot of rewriting, a lot of honesty from people um, beta reading it because it's, for me, it is not a great book, I have read far better. The fifth book of the project and the eighth finish of the month was Six by Care Juki. Again, bit of a letdown. Um, I didn't enjoy quite so much. I can see the bones of a good story in there. Um, it needs some polish. Um, and it's a lot of tell, barely any show. Um, and I just, I couldn't get on board with the main couple. I feel like she was trying to write dark romance and it didn't quite come off for me. Um, it could have been darker uh, and it just, it just didn't work. It's probably the best way to put it. It just did not work. Um, so again, another author that I'm not going to read from again and I'm probably not going to line up for when I get to the book signing. The final book of that project week and the ninth finish of the month is Bowie by Jules Ford. This one, um, this one, I want to say hit and miss um, because I was really, really enjoying it. But there's just certain things that maybe could just do with tweaking. Um, there were some timeline issues, I think. Um, there were times when she alluded to a lot of time passing and then you'd find out it was only hours. And it... I struggled with that a little bit. Some of that might have been to do with pacing. Um, it's small town America and I think it's motorcycle romance. Um, and I was left actually feeling like I wanted to go on and read book two in the series. Um, so it's it was a it was a good book. There it was a really solid storyline, a very solid romance. Um, there were just a couple of things. There was uh, the main female character was in some danger, but I didn't really get the tension um, that I needed to feel like she was in danger um, and to worry about whether it would all be resolved or not. So there were a lot of things that, that didn't quite hit the mark, but were solid and good enough to keep me reading. So I'm going to try Jules Ford again. And yeah, I will definitely join the queue for her table at the signing. That brought me to the end of that week's project. And when I was going into the following week, it was that month's round of final book support group, which was a week long. So what I decided to do was to put all of my romance, because I was very definitely in the mood for romance. I put all of the romance authors who I have series ongoing I put all of those into a spinner wheel and I used that to help me pick the books that I was going to read so pick the authors and then I would just continue the series um because I pretty much only had one series by all of those authors ongoing um and the first role came out with Corinne Michaels so I picked up Defenseless which is book five in the Salvation series as I said earlier when I talked about book two, I have already read books three and four. I read the series out of order, but they are interconnected duologies and the odd standalone. So I don't feel um, like that's caused any issues. This was Mark's story and his love interest was Charlie, who is a CIA, CIA operative. And I really enjoyed it. Again, really, really enjoyed it. I am left wanting more of Corinne Michaels. Um, and I can't wait to get back to her at some stage um, in the next couple of months. There will be a final book support group, not in April, but there will be one in May. So hopefully I can get back to her um, then and 
finish off this series um if not continue because she's got quite a few series now um and most of them are available in kindle unlimited so yes yeah, so i'm looking forward really really looking forward to picking corin up again Book 11 of the month was Turned by the Tiger by Felicity Heaton. This is in her Internal Mates series. Um, I think it's book 12. And this is um, a long series of interconnected novellas uh, set around demons, fae, shapeshifters, um, vampires, pretty much most elements of supernatural, paranormal, other normal are included in this series. Um, in this book we are moving to um, a tiger clan who are coming into the scene. Um, so it's tiger shifter and a human. And again Felicity Heaton is kind of continuing a background story um, across these books. Um, but the main emphasis is on romance and she does write a very good romance. She manages to pack quite a bit into very few pages and every time I pick up her books I don't understand why I've fallen so far behind with the series because I'm enjoying them. I enjoy them every time. Sometimes I think maybe having long gaps between reading the series is actually more helpful but it was very much a welcome return and I was glad to get back to her. Book 12 and the uh, third book for Final Book Support Group, it was War by Laura Thalassa. This is book two in her, um, I can't remember, Riders of the Apocalypse, something like that, um, series. It's based around um, pestilence, war, famine and death, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. That's the words I wanted, horsemen of the apocalypse, um, the four horsemen series. Book two is War's Story and this is set um, in parts of the Middle East and across into Egypt and he is spreading war and basically killing everyone in his path uh, by going to war with them with his um, supernatural abilities and he meets Miriam who he can't kill um, because she is his fated one and he knows as soon as he sees her. Um, it's okay. It's not bad. This is not a series I'm going to binge. This is a series that will be read off and on. Um, I will pick up book three, which I believe is going to be Famine Story. Um, but it's not the best because I think it's dragged out in a lot of ways. She's trying to spread it out so that, um, the human love interest the female main character Miriam in this case can fall in love with the horseman that she's met up with um but it, it's just a little dragged out in places as well there are certain things are repetitive because of it um and yeah that that's what means that I like it I don't necessarily love it um but I will move on in future book 13 of the month was tamed by a tiger by Felicity Heaton. It's the next book along from the one that I've just talked about um, in the Eternal Mates series. Again, another good solid Tiger Shifter this time. Uh, Tiger Shifter and uh, Leopard, Snow Leopard. I love Snow Leopards. I think they are beautiful cats. I think tigers are beautiful cats. Um, so yes, I thoroughly enjoyed this just for the talk of all the markings um, of the two different uh, cats there and I really enjoyed that. Um, again, it was another good solid one. Uh, it was one where the female main character is not a simpering in the corner waiting for the big, you know, ba big bad snow cat to come and rescue her. She's very much ferocious in her own right and she is um, in some danger and I really enjoyed it there isn't really very much I can say about these stories um they are pretty much they are fated mates so it is insta love insta lust so uh, there isn't really much to talk about because they fall in love immediately at first sight um but yeah they're just they're just great short palate cleansers um, and I do recommend Felicity Eaton's writing. I've, I've loved, I don't think there is a single book that I have 
not enjoyed in some way and some of the first books I read by her absolutely stand up as some of my most favourite of all time um, so it is always good to return to her and I was then really pleased when the final spin for Final Book Support Group came out with her again so I moved on to Treasured by a Tiger um, so as you can tell um, the last three books were all based around tiger shifters uh, they are siblings there is a fourth so I'm one, but the next book in this series doesn't cover the fourth sibling so I'm not sure when their story comes in um, I'm hoping we get their story if we haven't got it already um, but yes again thoroughly enjoyed it um, it was someone who was sure that they were unlovable because they are different um, and then they meet someone, um, that other person that they meet is someone who feels that uh, they are also unlovable because of certain reasons. Um, and yeah, they're, they're really good and they're great together and I really enjoyed it. Um, again, it was another one where strong female main character and the main male character is is happy to let them be the person that they are and love the person they are and just thoroughly enjoyed the ride um, and it did really well to round out Final Book Support Group for me. The final two books of the month were a little bit of a disappointment. So book 15 of the month was Her Werewolf Bodyguard by Jodie Vaughan. Um, again, just not a greatly developed story. Lots of move from here, go to there. And very swiftly moving from A to B to C to D um, with not a lot of development and there were conclusions that the main characters were coming to that didn't really make sense to me it could do with a lot more polish maybe a lot more stretching out maybe a lot more um, I don't understand why the two main characters came together I um, I just yeah they th there was just some element of werewolf lore that was new to me that I don't think was very well explained um, and was explained very much at the last minute. So yeah, wasn't happy with this one. And again, it's probably gonna be another series DNF. And my final finish for the month was the Cozy Book Co uh, choice for the month. We picked And Now We Shall Be Entirely Free by Andrew Miller. Um, I don't know what to say about this one. It was very slow. It took me quite some time to get into it. Uh, and I think that affected me. Not a lot happened. There was a lot of traveling. Um, and then we raced towards an end. And the, I don't think PTSD, which the main character is supposed to be suffering from, as far as I can tell, this was a historical fiction. It's set during the Napoleonic Wars. The main character has returned from the from the Napoleonic Wars, having been ill and um, having seen some things which were atrocious, um, and having to do some things that were horrid, um, and is suffering mentally from it. But I don't think that is explored properly, um, because even for the time period that it's set in, I think the author could have done a lot more with it. Um, so I don't think. I feel like it was supposed to be, I don't even know what to compare it to, to be honest with you. I just felt there was something lacking. Now, the writing is quite, is fairly good for what it is. The writing is okay. Um, I've given it three stars. I'm not sure if that's right, but it, it's not more than that. It's definitely not more than that, but to give it less, I feel is doing it a disservice. Um, but it's not one that's going to stay on my radar very long. Um, I'm probably going to forget about it as soon as I've taken the book back to the library. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I, yeah, it's it's one that I'm vaguely disappointed in. Um, and it's not an author who I'm going to read from ever again, unfortunately. So that was my reading month. How was yours? Let me know in the comments box down below. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Um, what were your stats for the month? Do you keep stats? Um, if you have enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already, then subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you all in my next one. Bye.